Now still trying to catch our breath from UConn's crushing win against the Bulls. That game concluding about half an hour ago. And Huskies looking like a potential one seed, even though Charlie Cream informs us they are on the two line come Selection Monday. Inside to Smith, the turnaround off the mark. Sam Rogers, the Cincinnati native, with the board. Starting five presented by the Air Force Reserve. Rogers from the Queen City, Flo Sifa from Africa, and Amari Thomas, first team all conference. Angel Riser, what a season it has been, rising up the record charts for the Bearcats. See a little bit of what you did there. You start with the puns early, okay. I've just been sitting on it for a while. Thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> what a fun player to watch, Riser, as Amari Thomas goes up. Angel Riser has been, to us, you know, we've seen how coachable that she's been. Michelle Clark heard has just done a terrific job of getting the potential out of her player, and she's taken all of that coaching, not criticism, coaching, right? Players can do that still, and gotten better with it. Riser off the mark, the rebound to Smith. Starting five for the Knights, also presented by the Air Force Reserve. I think we're gonna hear from Masani Kaba at some point, more on that in just a few. KK Wright, preseason co-player of the year. And the first basket by Siani Martin. Rodgers was fouled. Martin uh -huh. picks up her first. I think we definitely will hear Masa Dikaba talk because this is a team that talks a lot. KK Wright, one of the more vocal leaders you know, in the American Conference. Just love to see how she directs her team. But yeah, it's a, it's a chatty team, and that's what they do on defense. I think there's a lot of teams in the country, if you went and visited with UCF during one of their practices or shoot-arounds, you could learn something. Good. How to communicate, how to talk, how to be vocal, how to not back down from adversity. Miller launching from downtown. Thomas on the offensive glass tracks it down. There's a lot to be said about communication. Duke men's team, they practice communication. What that means is talking to each other during warm-ups, the stretching line. You're just saying, hey, let's go wide, let's go, ladies, you know, get warmed up. So by the time the game starts, you're already chirping away. Miller to Thomas, she has to hurry. Antoinette Miller gets it back, and that's an air ball and a shot clock violation. So you're telling me Duke practices talking, practices talking. Mm -hmm. Michelle Clark Hurd's not having to do that, neither is Coach A. Um, yes, they do. They sure do that every single day. They tell their ladies to communicate, and you want to hear voices. We have been in practices of some pretty top programs where you and I have just said, I'm sorry, why is this so quiet in here? Like, what's going on? That is a part of getting better. You have to be able to talk out how you're feeling, what's going on, pump up your teammates. And yes, we are talking about practice. We're talking about practice. Talk about practice. 4 nothing UCF, the bucket by Smith. Good start for the Knights, who were competitive against UConn on the road back in January. That's Three a minutes. tough zone. That is a tough zone, excuse me. Very active, they're finding the pockets in the short corner and collapsing on them. KK right off the mark. Christy, what do you have? Well, UCF runs a 3-2 matchup zone, but look how active and how much they extended so far. Look how far out the perimeter players of Cincinnati are in trying to execute an offense. That does not bode well for high percentage looks if they cannot penetrate this matchup zone. Kappa picks up the personal. We saw on that possession in Cincinnati still scoreless, bro. So what that tells you is there has to be an adjustment offensively either you know bring in some ball screen action you know move and rotate it you have to have sometimes even a set offense against a zone just to create some movement so you're not just passing and standing and then settling for a three-point shot you know, christy mentioned that three two that really forces you to try to look inside as sam rogers she ain't worried about no zone and Brooke, the highest percentage shot you can get against a matchup like that is to get a high post touch and then kick it out. Sam Rogers said, I don't need that touch on that last shot. <laughs> but in terms of percentages, that's what you always want to do to make the zone compact and then move the basketball. Ten straight games with a three-pointer for the senior Sam Rogers. Thomas clears the rebound. Here come the Bearcats. <laughs> Miller off the bounce. And both teams kind of still feeling each other out here in the early going. Right 
the floater, snakes it in. Wow, driving hard to her left and just changes positions and balance to get that shot off with the right hand. Her quickness, so it, it, you know it's coming and it's still deceptive. I don't know how that's possible. Sifa traveled. Wright certainly has been crafty in her final campaign, an Orlando native. Now a senior, she had a chance to go to so many different schools coming out of high school. She wanted to stay at home to help build UCM's program. Diamond Battles checking in for the first time, number three in wide for the Knights. She was impressive last night in a crushing win. Masani Kaba inside with position and the basket. Cincinnati still trying to figure out what to do against this zone. And yeah, it is incredibly active. Look at Diamond Battles. Riser at a pocket pick. Here comes Battles. She was so big last night, too. Her energy. I mean, I know it was a blowout game, but Diamond Battles set the tone for this night squad. It was early on, and you could tell she was the one with the extra energy, the extra intensity. Kaba against Thomas. Great battle here. Our veteran officiating crew, Fatu Sissoko Stevens with the call there. Ed Salaski, Mark Resch. That's right. You think you're bad, huh? That's right. <laughs> Be here tomorrow night as well. Another turnover. What a blast it has been. All right, the real keys to the game. Christy has some for us. Christy, what do you have? Michelle Hart Clark told me we have to win points in the paint. So far, they're at a deficit of zero to four. We've got to take care of the ball. Already five turnovers to this point in the game, and we've got to attack their bigs and get go at them. No points for the post players of Cincinnati to this point. Eight to three, UCF. Brooke Weisbrook, Roy Philpott, Christy Thomas Cuddy here with you. Have the call of the championship tomorrow night as well over on ESPN2. Off the turnover, here come the Bearcats, the number three seed in this year's American Women's Basketball Championship. 11 possessions in, not a good start for Cincinnati. Well, where can Cincinnati enter the basketball around the elbow? You like it inside here, you got to feel decent about that without the finish. The entry pass has to come into the paint somewhere so that defense can collapse in. That'll open up some shots. Battles to Smith, the turnaround. There's the foul, and Thomas picks up the infraction. Now, Chalea Watson checking in. Broke her nose yesterday and a hard hit late in that game in the big win, 94-52. She ran into the elbow, actually, of Moore, her teammate, on a hustle play, just trying to follow the basketball on an offensive rebound and kind of lost her balance. And, yeah, the elbow hit squarely onto the bridge of her nose. So you can only imagine how hard it is to try to adjust with that mask on your face. You can't see the rim. It just it feels odd. Can you breathe normally through your nose? You, you All these questions. Quarry minds want to know. I do. I don't want to break my nose to find out, but I'm just curious. Like, let me wear the mask and shoot some. Let me see how it is. Watson misses her first shot off the bench. Cincinnati discombobulated on offense so far. Yeah, they've had a lot of trouble with the uh, with the entry pass, getting some flow. You know, I'd like to see a Cincinnati possession that has maybe six or seven passes to it. Open look for Georgia Gale. She's good. All net. She's good. The three is her shot. 38% from downtown this season. 53 threes made entering the American Athletic Conference Tournament. Working against the 3-2. Remember how last night, how Wichita State had such a hard time scoring against the zone? I mean, we were in the same spot. And UCF had spent a good 45 minutes on their zone yesterday. In their second shoot around, they took two practices before their game against Wichita State. Thomas on the putback, second field goal, cuts the lead to seven. UCF spreading the wealth right now, right? Yeah. This is a good sign. Coach Abe, I mean, that shouldn't happen. That's a wide open pass to the inside. Michelle Clark heard. It's going to get her out of her seat. Four.
14 to 5. Winner of this game will get UConn tomorrow night. Thomas has four. There's a nice high low entry pass into Thomas. That might help open things up for the Bearcats. Can it get them awake though on defense? That's where they need to generate some of their offense, get some tips, deflections, and change it to his own now. Approaching two to play in the first. Gale left wide open. That's her spot. You know it's going down. She's going to burn you from the left. She's going to burn you from the right. Is that the right cheer? Is that? That's not the banana peel oh, cheer we talked about two cheer. hours ago. Oh, no. Okay. Peel to the left. Peel to the right. Peel down the middle. Boom. Take a bite. Got it. Christy. Well, guys, look how the ball is sticking on offense for Cincinnati. Players are catching it, then they're surveying to see what to do next. If you're going to attack a zone, you've got to make the ball move and move quickly so that you force the defense to scramble. So far, it's been easy for UCF to match up and stay solid defensively. Yeah, they seem confused, don't they? There's a lot of catch and hold and, hey, where am I supposed to go and where do you get open? Yeah, the best offense is when you already know what you want to do with the ball before it hits your hands. Do the work before you get the ball. Watson off the mark. She'll chase down the loose ball. Great hustle by the freshman. Riser, the elbow J, silky smooth. Yeah. A play generated over energy. That really helps. Watson got it started with keeping the shot alive in the offensive rebound. But you know what, Roy? You see just the pass. A little jab step, one dribble shovel pass from Sam Rogers. There's a turnover. Bearcats get it back. 101 remaining in the first quarter. Now Cincinnati shooting an ice cold 30% so far. Trailing by eight. Two teams split their regular season meetings. Both teams winning on their home court. Here's Riser, the most improved player in the conference as that one's tapped out. Back to the Knights. Kind of a choppy start on both sides, but UCF, the benefactors so far, Christy. Well, Michelle Clark Kurt has already gone to her third different half court defense, and she's known for this. She wants to keep an offense off balance by just mixing it up and making the offense read before they know what to do. But so far, UCF has not had any issues. KK Wright, an open look, swiped out. It'll stay with the Knights. Destiny Thomas thought may have touched it last. Instead, it'll stay with UCF. Six second differential between the clocks. Well, the Bearcats put up 94 points last night in the crushing win against Memphis. Just nine points in the first 10 minutes so far. Yeah, they've done a good job. And I like the Bearcats trap off this high ball screen except a foul on Moore. And we knew Cincinnati was going to throw some different looks at KK Hauser, or excuse me, KK Wright. Try and keep her confused. Last shot here. Look for a 1-4 one, one low. Or not. <laughs> High ball screen. Martin back iron. Rogers the rebound. Three on two. Bearcats with numbers. Inside to Riser. The catch and the foul. Angel Riser, the most improved player in the American third team off conference. And she has started every game of her final season in the Queen City. And Coach A frustrated big time with that foul, pointing right up to the clock, saying, hey, the clock's running out. She's got a difficult layup to make under the basket. Get straight up. Talking things over with her senior leader, the star point guard, KK Wright. We asked KK yesterday, where does your leadership vibe come from, your vocalness? She's like, hey, it's in my DNA. It's how I am. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm buying it. <laughs> I ain't say anything else. Well, once once we found out that she requested a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with the athletic director to talk about the vision of the program, both of us kind of looked like, oh, okay. That was as a senior in high school. Yeah. Ten in the books. Knights by six. This game was established. Then the three-pointer started to fly by George Gale. Well, the flow has been there for the Knights. A six-point lead, 10 minutes in. 
And Georgia Gale coming off the bench, getting the job done, bro. Yeah, you've got to stay within range. Just contest her. What we're seeing defensively from Cincinnati is so different from last night. And, you know, Memphis limited with the amount of shooters and scores that they have. UCF a much uh, more diverse team. And more people that you have to pay attention to, but easy entry passes for the Knights into the paint. They're going to do a much better job of guarding that, try to force UCF to go inside out. From the corner, Watson traveled. I mean, it's, that's tough and gritty to be able to play one day after breaking your nose for Michelle Clark Hurd. Somehow it's like, I don't see you calling a game. If you've got a broken nose, you got to wear a mask. What do you think? Can you do it? No, I think I can do it. It may sound a little nasally, but I think I could do it. I don't know. I think, see so you taking the L. <laughs> Where, where's the confidence? Where's the love? Wow. Guys, I never broke my nose, but I've had players who have had to play with that mask, and they talk about, first of all, the glare and how it affects their overall vision. But if you don't have a handle that's on point, it's amazing how much time, how much young players kind of glance down when they're handling the ball, and so that affects their ability to operate on the offensive end as well. That's a great point. Yeah, think about her trying to look down at her dribble. Well, in that last travel, you know, I couldn't help but wonder when she caught it, is it a matter of that she was distracted by the mask versus just because she had Thomas wide open in the low post, but she missed her and shuffled her feet. What about the sweat, too? I mean, does it make it slippery? Is it hard to keep on? Does it get foggy? Foggy, I definitely witnessed. Uh, I never really asked that much in, to get into detail <laughs> with the players, but I do know it was fog up a lot, yes. I yeah. need a telestration. This is me this. nerding out over things I have never experienced. Riser has to hurry. She does. Back-to-back -back air balls. Thomas cleans it up. Big time possession for the Bearcats. That's what they needed to kind of flex and say, okay, we are big. Now they can set up some press, get things uncomfortable and slow for UCF. Nineteen to thirteen. Winner of this game gets UConn tomorrow night on ESPN two at seven o'clock for all the marbles. Smith was fouled. All the Connecticut players in the stands. Interesting note here. Oh, look there's, closely. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing in her hand. There's nothing in her hand. What's Where missing from this picture? Are the phones? Where are they? Yes. It's almost like a rare moment to see, I mean, can we say millennials? Is that all right? That's, yeah. not, that's not a bad word, I right? Mean, I'm looking at my phone right now. <laughs> they aren't. Roy's over here doing a TikTok during the game. Unbelievable. Well, I mean. Let's go. Pay attention. That's our society in 2020. Well, I don't know if that's a rule that Coach Ariana and his staff put in, but it's so refreshing. Lead back to eight. Daya Moore goes to work. And now UCF ratcheting up the defensive pressure. Antoinette Miller contested three in and out. Riser on the offensive glass and a fresh 20. Thomas inside and tell you what, you get her with position in that high rent district, she's gonna make you pay. Yeah, she really knows how to, to establish that low position but then get a clean shot. And what she makes up for with the lack of height. She's got that terrific strength, a good sense of timing. And I like the pass. Again, very purposeful from Sam. Look, guys, Cincinnati's struggling from the field. Only 27% to this point in the game. And the only reason they're staying in the game is seven offensive rebounds. Right now, seven second chance points. Thomas trying to get the job done, Christy, at the strike. Seven points so far tonight. Make it eight in the lead back to six. What's it like playing a team for the third time in a season? That's a lot. Yeah, it really is. And it, it gives you confidence if you've lost twice to say, you know it's going to be hard to beat us three different times. But it's also frustrating because you feel like they know everything about you. So if it's not rolling, your three shots not rolling, KK right here to stay, She's then it feels like five. an uphill battle. Yeah, no question. Back to the 3-2 zone for the Knights. Cincinnati in search of a couple of stops and those marquee runs to try to get back into this in the way that Michelle Clark heard once. Riser traveled. Oh, 
Well, here's that last three. You say KK all the way over here. No Cincinnati players even within reach. She, 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 you see she gets that wide open three-point shot. That's where Cincinnati's got to get better. Got to be aware of who can shoot. A little stop and pop from 15. Masani Kaba off the mark. But Brooke, the, wide, the reason why KK was so wide open is because Smith sealed Thomas down low trying to get her own pass for the ball, and that prevented Smith from getting out to the shooter. Miller was fouled, and she'll shoot two. So, against a zone, you can get open looks by people setting screens for you, like that on the back side, so it's impossible for that defender to get over there and rotate in, a, in enough time. And for Cincinnati, you know, they're starting to grind their way back into this game. Sometimes forcing it inside a little too much, but getting themselves to the free throw line is, is good for them to chip away at the lead. Just such a difficult zone to play against. It, it really feels like there's no openings whatsoever. And UCF so good at trying to take away the entry pass into the, the elbows or just right in that middle of the paint. That's where every coach starts. You try to get it there into the short corners. UCF knows that. They're trying to take it away. The Knights perhaps playing for their NCAA tournament lives today as well as Kaba was hacked on the arm in the process of shooting. Right now, Charlie Cream has UCF in as one of the last four teams in, and literally the last team in as of last check. You see that record, 0-3 against the top 25, the RPI 35. A loss here tonight would be detrimental for Coach Abe's club. A win, you're still in the conversation yeah. tomorrow. There's still work to do, I think. If you're, you can't be quite confident just yet if you're UCF. You need to get a spot into the championship game. And on top of that, it sure would help to stick around with UConn for a while. Yeah, just look the part <laughs> for two and a half quarters. And they did that on the road back in January. That was a seven-point loss. One of the more competitive games we've mm -hmm. seen for the Huskies in the American, going back now seven seasons as UCF builds its largest lead. Well, that zone has been stifling. Khalifa checks in for the first time. Number 50 in red. Jada Scott. Dea Moore from the baseline. Miller on the offensive glass. Oh, up and under. Good move. And she was fouled. Antoinette Miller, a 5'6 senior. Done a great job of not just being a facilitator, but being a threat on the offensive glass and, and on the floor. I mean, she's got to be in there to shoot today. She hasn't had anything successful just yet. Well, the Knights hoping they're going to hear their name called coming up on Selection Monday as Miller will get one more free throw. March 16th, once again, we'll have the exclusive live announcement of the 64-team NCAA Women's Championship field this year at 7 Eastern, once again on ESPN, the NCAA Women's Selection Special, also streaming live on the ESPN app. And we've got a couple of teams that have already punched their ticket, including... A few today, NC State out of the ACC, South Carolina out of the Southeastern Conference. Little Boise State never hurt anybody. Oh, Dayton on the men's and the women's side, doing things with the Flyers. We'll be topping. I mean, Dayton has a legit chance of winning a national championship on the men's side. That is so cool. Obi Toppin's the best player in college he basketball. He really is. Outside of Sabrina. Correct. Very good player, very good. And the elbow on Diamond Battles. So Jada Scott picks up her first. Lead at 10 for the Knights, playing 1,100 miles from home today. But the weather a little warmer down in Orlando. Although the weather hasn't really been that bad here in Connecticut this weekend either. No, you know, we've been managed to be outside for probably a total of an hour throughout the last four days. It's been nice, a little fresh air here and there. Every two and a half hours or so. Inside, Brittany Smith and a chance for three. And UCF still in control of this offense with the spacing off the ball screen. Great slip. That's got to be the adjustment from Khalifa there. She's got to slide over. Can't put your palms up. 
got to understand, and that's what Coach will definitely be chatting with her about, about that defensive rotation, get over the help side, you know, wall up, get in that circle, and box out. Smith with 10. First player in double figures for either side. And Michelle Clark heard starting to get a little more agitated about her team, feeling like, hey, this thing hasn't, hasn't come together for us yet. They have yet to have maybe three sequences in a row, possessions where it's like score, score, score. They get a stop. They def desperately need a stop here. Here comes KK Wright. Well, she wants this one. Comes up short. Halfway through the second quarter, UCF with its largest lead. Mari Thomas traveled. Timeout on the floor as we step aside in Uncasville. Hey, y'all. Definitely. Um, yeah, so I still get the dub tonight. I love you. Love you too. And like, I still can't believe I grew up with a superstar. <laughs> Oh, it's all in the family, the twin sisters, Jada and Jaden Scott, delivering a message to Trey Scott on senior night back in the Queen City. And guess what? Trey Scott showed out in a big way in his final game at Fifth Third Arena. The game winner last night, Brooke Weisbro. Well, that doesn't hurt, does it? Get a little pep talk from your sisters? Go on and finish off senior night right with the game winner. It's a way to do it. How about... Two sisters and a brother, all playing at Cincinnati, all turning in sensational careers. And Jane and Jade are just freshmen, so their best hoop's still well in front of them. But Trey Scott on senior night, after getting that kind of video introduction by your sisters beforehand, everybody's getting emotional. And then you top it all off in a game you had to win that you needed to enhance a Cincy resume on the men's side. The senior gets the game winner. Can't make that stuff up as KK Wright comes up short. Here come the Bearcats. A day of more off to the races. Count it. You know, for Cincinnati to get a chance to get more confidence here on defense, they've got to move their feet better, get bigger. Also, I mean, hands are down, right? You're not seeing that necessarily on UCF side. They're getting wide and big, and they're forcing Cincinnati to start their offense well beyond the three-point line. That's Smith traveled. You're one step ahead of our veteran officiating <laughs> crew tonight, aren't you? Those are sometimes those are the thoughts I need to just keep inside and let the officials call the game. But yeah, sometimes it's yeah, it's like me, the player out there, like no, 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 she walked, she walked, she walked. <laughs> I was giving high fives to our crew before the game, you before were. tip off. You were over here sulking in well, the corner. That's my typical MO with as a player anyways with officials I wasn't out there trying to give them high fives I was like when are you going to call a technical because <laughs> I know it's coming Cobb with the rebound off the Thomas miss battles boy she's Strong, good oh man wow she has one speed and it's 150 miles an hour look at how active she is on defense right that's what you want to see if you're Cincinnati but UCF They've been a much more aggressive and active defensive team in the first half, and this is why it's 31-18. Shot clock under eight. Rogers left wide open. And Sifa with the foul trying to claim the rebound. And a good job by Sifa to go pick up battles after that, crashing the boards. Let's see her coast to coast. Explode? Wow, I don't know how that ball went in. She barely saw it, but yeah, that's a big time energy play. Split the defense. The very last minute, you get your eyes on the rim for the bank. 5'8 sophomore from Winter Haven, Florida, Winter Haven High School. 18 starts this season. She's coming off the bench here in Uncasville so far. I mean, that's so incredible to me that at 5'8, you're able to have that kind of speed, strength, agility, and finish. I mean, I'm one inch shorter than her, and there's no chance I'd feel good about her guarding me in my confidence to score on Diamond Battles. Uh, yeah. What? What? Diamond's going to take care of business. <laughs> I hate to tell you. Yeah, I know. I know it. Knights with their largest lead once again, this time at 15, under three to play in the first. I mean, really? That's a, that's a no contest kind of deal. I know. Diamond versus Candace. But Come back on. in my day. 
Now coming up on the Audi Halftime Report, John Brickley, Sue Burr, Coach Landers, and Charlie Cream. A couple of more tickets punched, an upset in Ames. That and a lot more in about two and a half minutes. Thomas inside, a much needed bucket for the Bearcats. Mike Thomas now with 10. Cincinnati back to a man-to-man -man defense. Kaba inside of Destiny Thomas. She was stripped. And then the foul on 33 and White. That's her second. Great hustle by Antoinette Miller. That was the help side. Could see the high-low pass trying to be had. So she left her person to go down and get her hands on the ball. That was a brilliant heads-up play defensively. Not only that, it'll put her at the free throw line. Check that, her third foul. So Thomas quickly to the bench. And here's Antoinette Miller. One for four at the stripe tonight. And Cincinnati, very important to close out these final two minutes in strong fashion after falling behind by 15 points. Now just 11 points for Cincinnati. He's got to feel somewhat attainable now after a struggle in the first really 15 minutes of this half. Well, KK Wright being hassled and fouled. It's either Sifa or Miller. Ed Zalaski and Mark Resch will talk it over. And it goes to Sifa, her second. UCF in the bonus, Bearcats are as well. That'll put KK right at the line where she's 86% this season. Yeah, something's going on. Let's see what happened in this exchange while she's feeling a little ginger after she got up from that exchange. So we'll we'll take a look at this. Flo Sifa just trying to do the double team, get a piece of it. Oh, oh a little left ankle turn there. She's so quick on her feet, you know. It's amazing to me that players wear the low top shoes, but I've learned a lot about sneakers considering I love them so much. And it doesn't matter. The low top sneakers don't give you a, you know, make you more exposed to an ankle injury. If the base of the shoe is pretty heavy and wide, that's what's going to keep it stuck on the floor. And high tops doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean you're not going to spray your ankle. Didn't know that. Yeah. From the corner, Watson. KK Wright surveys. Masanikaba inside. Great rotation from Sam Rogers. And Masanikaba, such an active player in the post. Trying to look for her. I like how she stuck with the play. Took a lot of action, but she'll get to the free throw line. Shella Watson picks up her first. Knights back to the line. Now UCF making a living at the stripe 10 of 11 so far and Kaba on her way to a double-double. Knights perfect here in the second quarter until that miss. Thirty-six to twenty-two, a buck sixteen to go. If I'm Cincinnati, I am trying to get the ball down low to Amari Miller, Amari Thomas. Excuse me. I want her to get some touches, to have some success in the paint. Give me carried through with some momentum to the second half. From the wing, that one spins home for Antoinette Miller. The three will also work. No foul, no foul. And Miller now with six points, Christy. Well, guys, that's one of the first times I've seen a true set play against the zone called from the bench. They screened in the weak side, which is how Miller was open to knock down that three. As a result, the lead back to 11. Knights with 10 to shoot. Winner of this game gets UConn tomorrow night, 7 o'clock ESPN2 for the title. Here comes KK.
And the Knights turn it over on the shot clock violation. It's great defense, but you got to have better self-awareness if you're UCF and not just pass the hot potato around. Somebody's got to res be responsible for just putting it up. Maybe get the offensive rebound, but it's a waste of a possession. Well, KK Wright only 5'8 at the top of the zone. Her presence much more imposing than her frame. Big time. Thomas lost the handle right, tapped it last out of bounds. 2.1 to go. Now UCF three of four from three-point range, just two of eight for the Bearcats. And for Coach Abe, pretty good start to try to punch their ticket to the championship game tomorrow night. Two seconds, you can have a ball fake, one dribble pull up. Don't necessarily have to catch and launch. Watson, no. 20 minutes in the books here in the second semifinal in Uncasville. Basketball championship. One half away from deciding the total championship game tomorrow night. UCF leading Cincinnati the two over the three. 36 to 25 is our score. With Brooke, I'm Roy. Christie joins us in just one minute. Your thoughts from the first 20 and kind of what we've seen. Well, I like what Coach Abe had to say. You know, she feels like her defense was solid. That's really what got them in a great position. You know, Cincinnati loves to rotate the ball. So instead, UCF's defense has been stifling, keeping it to one side of the floor. So you see the result. Cincinnati shooting just 30%. They can't get a good look at three. Meanwhile, UCF being very efficient on offense and getting some production from the bench. Yeah, the Knights have done a great job working it inside. Christy thomas Cuddy has more. Well, Roy, I entered tonight thinking Cincinnati had the advantage in the low post. However, it's been UCF's post who had that advantage to this point in the game, and here is why. They have done a great job of getting two feet in the paint and burying Amari Thomas. They have the wingspan advantage. All they've had to do is catch, drop, step, and score. Cincinnati's got to do a better job this second half of pushing those UCF posts out of the paint if they're going to have a chance to get back in this game. And they're going to push Christy right off the floor right now. It's Christy the second half. Out, Flo Sifa, come on. Getting set to start. Flo Sifa was uh, establishing her territory. She's just showing how a drop step's done. A proper two feet in the lane drop step from I don't think Christy played post in her day. I'm not getting that vibe. More of a guard vibe. But you know, as a coach, you got to teach everything, right? I just love it when you guys get all coachy, which you love to do. Me? I'm not coaching. Well, you are Leave that up to the experts. Coachable. <laughs> Un? Un. Un. Got you. Yeah. Not trying to fool anybody. Heard that before. Start of the third quarter. Lead is 11. Here comes UCF. Winner gets UConn. The championship tomorrow night. Right now, they're doing the opposite of what they need to do defensively. That was too easy of a catch inside from Brittany Smith. First possession for the Bearcats. Third time these two teams have met this season. Home team won each of the first two. Night zone has been stifling. They'll get it to Riser with 10 on the clock. Riser, nice move. Short, Smith, the rebound. I was going to say, what, what is she doing with the catch in the hole? She's got to catch, pull that through. She's so much quicker and has to use that advantage against Brittany Smith, who's taller. But Riser has got a more complete game. Pull Smith away from the basket. Ball fake, dribble, lay it up. I mean, as a coach, he just some, not that I've ever been there, but Michelle Parker probably wants to take Angel out of the game, kind of shake her shoulders and say, listen, you're good. Sanders, an air ball. Thomas will tap it to Rogers as Antoinette Miller was slow to get up. UCF needs this win to stay on the right side of Charlie Cream's bubble. Right now, the Knights are literally the last team in the field, according to our ESPN bracketologist as an 11 seed. So a loss would be detrimental, to say the least. And right now, the, the Knights still doing a good job distributing the basketball, shooting 42%. Cincinnati just trying to get there. And the tough shot, the Bearcats are below 30% from the floor tonight. And Riser's one for six after that last miss. And the way she shot that so short, it was short on confidence. I mean, it wasn't even like an effort thing. How about that shot by Siani Martin? And on the other side, a chance for three, Angel Riser. That's better. Great look ahead. We've seen this football pass a few times. Angel Riser 
the recipient of a terrific pass. I believe that one came from Ant Miller. Well, Brooke, to your point, they're not in rhythm, Cincinnati players, when they catch the ball, and that's because of just how disruptive UCF's has been on defense. They're active, they're there on the catch sometimes, sometimes they're not. So Cincinnati's players have been off off balance every time they've caught. They don't know if they're open or if they're trying to create space with that sweep and clear. Yeah, hey guys, we're just looking for that one run for Cincy. It has not happened in this game, and credit UCF. Stifling defense with a 3-2 zone, and just enough KK Wright and Brittany Smith to maintain this 10-point lead. Nice seal. Oh, Sam! Ooh, she get caught for the foul, but... Sam, Sam just does things you never expect. Help side defense, Rogers comes over big and does get contact with the body. We saw Sam Rogers throw a three-point shot into the second row of the stands yesterday. A little sneaky athlete you are, Sam. I don't think I've ever seen you get so excited. Well, it's kind of unexpected. You didn't see her in the picture of your screen. All of a sudden, she jumps over. And I think that's why she's such a good player. We, we've talked so much about how she's so versatile. Can score, rebound, pass. She's, she's been effective tonight. Love Skyline Chili, unfortunately. Stop it. Kaba one for two. Skyline's so good. No. It's so good. I know I'm on the outs with this. I'm already third man out. Christy, I know she likes it. Y'all are killing me. I'm team Brooke on this one. No. Oh, she said no. Okay, cool. I tried it once, and that was more than enough. Christy, it's been great working with you. <laughs> we'll see you again later in Champ Week. <laughs> now some graders ice cream. I'm there with That's you guys. What's up? Black raspberry chip. Where you at? Chip Willie. Martin dumps it off to Smith, too strong. And the rebound to Angel Riser. Now a chance for Cincy. Here's a steal by KK Wright. Good decision. The one-on-one -on -one against Riser wasn't there. So KK going to pull it out. See if UCF can get her the ball back and reward her for that steal instead. Battles. She's got a nice assist. Almost. Miller left open for a moment. And Rodgers tapped it out. UCF basketball with an 11-point lead. Now the Knights back-to-back -back seasons. Runners up to UConn. Trying to face the Huskies once again in the championship. And don't forget coverage of the American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship continues tomorrow night, ESPN2. Also on the ESPN app with our championship game, UConn against the winner of this one. And how much fun is that going to be? This team punches their ticket officially. The American Athletic Conference hoping at least two teams get into the field. UCF needs to win tonight to provide that opportunity. Although yeah. Cincinnati fit one tonight and tomorrow, I think Bearcats obviously be there too. For sure. And that's what UCF is thinking about, about you know unfinished business as Riser finally gets one going from the free throw line. This is a program still being built. And still trying to get back you know, to prominence, but you got one team with 20 wins, another with 21. I mean, two fantastic teams that are vying for the top, being the top dog in the league next year. UConn's headed out. So this is, right, who's gonna be the big dog next year? Who's gonna step up? These two, Jose Fernandez and USF, there's mm -hmm. a foul and it's offensive on Battles. Yes, great job by Flo Sifa to set up and take that charge from Battles. You know, battle's so aggressive, you know she's not going to pull up and shoot. So instead, look at this help side. Oh, man, that's awesome. All the way over from the other side of the lane. That'll be a clip that the coaching staff will save and share as a positive. Sifa has not attempted a field goal tonight. Athletic defender missed part of the season after her visa was not renewed in time after she went back home to Africa. And now that she's back, Vital cog for head coach Michelle Clark Hurd in this program. 14 to shoot, almost halfway through the third, and Cincinnati trailing UCF by nine. Do you want to get Thomas some more touches here? Do you try to get Miller or someone else going from the perimeter? I just like to see somebody with the confidence to shoot. I feel like there's too, been too many passive plays. Oh! Uh, yeah! Yeah, that's what I'll take. Some more of that. 
Talk to me, Flo Sifa, says Brooke Weisbro. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Flo. <laughs> Coach Clark Hurd is like, uh, I don't see you do that all season, but I want to see some more of that. Flo Sifa, took too long to get you back, young lady, but here you are. Oh my gosh, MJ, come on, up and under. Give it to me. Can we nominate him for top 10? Top 10. Great stuff from Snacks. Don't forget to mon on Monday, rather March 16th, we'll have the exclusive live announcement of the 64 team NCAA Women's Championship field. Once again, 7 Eastern, ESPN, the NCAA Women's Selection Special, also streaming live on the ESPN app, and maybe even a little added analysis from our good friend, team manager at Jackson State, Snacks. I would like to hear Snacks break down the bracket or Indeed. From the sideline report. You know, he's got some good insight. Great to have you with us halfway through our third quarter, the second semifinal here at the American Women's Basketball Championship. Christy Thomas Cuddy, Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott. And the baseline drive, KK Wright shoved to the deck, and she was fouled in the process. All of a sudden, we have a seven point game, so very much within striking distance. If you're Cincinnati, you want to think about it possession, one possession at a time. And if you're UCF, you say, all right, let's continue to stay aggressive, stay in our mode. You know, Cincinnati may hit some shots, but let's stay in our game plan because it's been effective. And they have yet to really show they can continuously score and, and get open looks against your zone. So stay in it, stay engaged. Knights almost three minutes since their last points. Battles. Brittany Smith back to work. Double team. Short. Timeout on the floor as we step aside. Well, the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year, Megan Walker, 21 points earlier today in the crushing win against USF as the Huskies remain undefeated against the Bulls. And I tell you what, she had it going on inside, out, aggressive defensively as well, Brooke. Business. Megan Walker was all about her business today, as were the UConn Huskies taking care of South Florida easily, handily, and quickly. Moving on to the finals. Try to put a cap on the American Athletic Conference going for their seventh straight championship. 139-0 with a win tomorrow night. We'll see if it happens. Here's a steal. Flo Sipa. 39-34, as close as since he has been since the second quarter. Huskies dominant since entering the conference. That is not a typo. Average margin of victory <laughs> at 40 yeah, points. It's not four or 4.1. That is 40. It's a 40 burger. It's just been so defeating for teams that try to even, you know, step in the building and compete with the Huskies throughout the years. Going back to the Big East days when the you know, Big East was an incredibly competitive conference and they were still putting up you know, wins over teams by 20 to 40 points every night. Bearcats in the midst of a 9 to 1 run. Knights need Simone, they need it in a hurry. Wright was fouled by Sifa. Her third. Not easy to stay in front of KK Wright. I mean, she's quick in general, but the first and second steps. You got the jab step to make the defense think you're going one way, and then that next step to get real estate and space away from your defense. Two very quick steps in her arsenal. Inside to Smith. Wild runner, never hit the rim, shot clock at six. Cabo off the mark. And Wright will track it down with a fresh 20. I like KK. The way, I was gonna say, I like the way that Cincinnati's defending off the ball screen. I think it's a good idea to try to double KK. She's got seven points tonight, that's it, another steal. See for to Rogers, inside to Roger, up and in. One possession game. Huge. Cincinnati's defense getting on the glass is limiting UCF's opportunity for those second and third chance shots. Then that gets him into the run out. And guys, the difference right now is that Cincinnati's been able to convert the turnovers into UCF and the points. They only had two at half, but now they are up to 10 already in this quarter. Bearcats have been the aggressor. Christie, chance to tie. Count it! Antoinette Miller from the corner. Just like that, 39 apiece. All righty 
then we got a game. 14 to one run in the last five plus. Bearcats with Uncle Mo on their side. Another turnover. Bearcats have not led until right now the chance for three. Amari Thomas. UCF late to get back on transition. You know, this is just running to your spot. Brittany Smith not running back fast enough to get in front of Amari Thomas. And how many times have we seen Antoinette Miller with a terrific look ahead and passing placement? Christy talked about two feet in the paint. How about for Cincinnati get two feet in the paint? The run now at 16 to one. Bearcats with six consecutive makes from the floor. Right is too strong. A day of more clears. Interesting now, look at the defense for UCF. That's the first time we've seen them run and jump and try and trap. I was gonna say their defense set back a little bit further than it was in the first parts of these games, or this game I should say. Riser to Rogers off the pump fake, baseline. Thomas, foul. And Amari Thomas starting to take this game over. Well, Roy, here's the difference in the game. In the first half, the stingy defense of UCF, Bearcats could get nothing going. We're seeing it here in the third. They're getting out in transitions off of the UCF turnovers. Their energy level is picked up. The defense is more active, and we're seeing them attack the offensive glass as well. They have been the aggressor so many different ways. Thomas now 13 points. The lead is three. And the metrics impressive. So far in the third quarter for Cincy. Yeah, defensively, they have shut UCF out over their last eight, making them turn the ball over four times. And the UCF without a basket, almost six minutes. Another turnover. Wright lost it. And Coach Abe saying, settle mm -hmm. things down, mm -hmm. calm down. Bearcats once trailed by 15, now lead it by four. Riser back to work. And Smith the rebound. Boy, UCF needs a spark. Yeah, they do. Extended defense for Cincinnati been a problem. KK Wright trying to create off the bounce. The trap off the screen's been very effective. I think that's just really thrown her to a wide angle on the basket. She hasn't been able to penetrate the defense. Right open for a moment. Thomas with the closeout, under 10 to shoot. Kaba. And a shot clock violation, another turnover for the Knights. Well, Brooke, I agree. I think every since you see um, Cincinnati started trapping the on-ball, it slowed UCS offense down. But the other thing Cincinnati's doing a great job of is the weak side rotation. They have been there to take the roller consistently now in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. UCF can play for the final shot of the third quarter, one that has been dominated by Cincinnati. Coach Abe going to call the set play. She wants KK away from the ball. Martin directing traffic. He'll feed it inside. Kaba goes to work. And she travels. You know, Cincinnati's really been able to just be problematic defensively here in this third quarter. They have made the difference. Somebody's been hitting the gym. <laughs> well, the Bearcats have come alive here in the third quarter. They outscore UCF 18 to three. They're playing more aggressive. They're knocking down outside shots. And now we have a game. 43-39, Cincinnati heading into the fourth.
there. There's distribution, Angel Riser getting in on it, but it is because Cincinnati has been so much more intentional about playing aggressive. Yeah, bench getting hyped. Good job, assistant coaches, keep them chill. Sit down, sit down. Don't want to get the technical in the, in the moments. The Knights 0 oh, for their last nine. Seven turnovers in the last eight minutes. The offense dysfunctional. Bearcats will inbound at the start of final 10 minutes with Christy thomas Cuddy. Brooke Weisbro, Roy Philpott, away we go for our fourth and final stanza before the championship. Bring it, don't sing it. <laughs> We're going to stop it in play here. It looks like a foul away from the ball. Be Brittany Smith. Smith. That'll be her third. So Destiny Thomas with three, Brittany Smith with three. Knights just trying to get a bucket, start the fourth. Need to stop first. Different spring of the step for the Bearcats in our second half. And a tougher look for UCF. I, I, they look more engaged. They look a little upset. And we talked about Wichita State playing angry. I feel like UCF's right about there. Mari Thomas has 16. Oh, she's so good. You know, she's good into getting that bump, right? The bump off the turn over her left-hand shoulder and that little fadeaway. She plays bigger than her 5'10 frame. Sifa hit the deck. That's an offensive foul. Amari Thomas, we heard Michelle Clark heard talk about Amari cannot wait for the game to come to her. She's got to go get it. It's a little shake over her shoulder. Get some separation. Decision time for Coach A. Brittany Smith just picked up her fourth foul. Yeah. This is tough. You, know, you need your bigs in. And they're going to take another look. Now Flo Sifa, the contact. Now she fell down pretty hard. Yeah, she covered her face as soon as she got hit. So we'll have to see what's, what happened here. The two, Sissoko Stevens is going to give us the 4 one, one. And Leaves. contact upstairs. Yeah. I mean, you can't help it. If you're Brittany Smith, you're just crossing your arms to set a screen. It's not your fault that somebody's shorter than you that runs into your, your arms. And at the same time, there's so much emphasis that's been put on contact above the shoulders if it's excessive or unnecessary. I think this would just be a basketball play. They're just double checking it. But look like an illegal offensive move, just bad screen. Ed Salaski, Mark Resch, Fatou Sissoko Stevens having a secondary look at that last mm -hmm. sequence, Brooke. Well, we are in favor of getting the call right, and we're also in favor of getting it done quickly. 60 minutes or 60 second timer, I think it would be good for this one. But there's Sifa taking the shot. Nothing excessive, unnecessary, illegal, anything. Looks like I don't think she was trying to hurt her. She was trying to set a solid screen. Sifa happened to be at the same height as her arms. What do you think? I don't know if I agree. Yeah? Think there's a little extra sauce on that? Uh, there's some extra spice, and I think it's going to result in something extra being called. All right, we'll see. Yeah, you're wrong again there, Roy. <laughs> Chrissy, what did you think about that? I thought she, she didn't extend, but I thought the upper body moved forward, so I'm surprised with that call, to be honest. Thank you. Didn't extend. Keyword, didn't extend. Oh, man. Am I even now with the agreeing on the evening? <laughs> Where am I at now? The middle child has spoken. Riser, the mid-range. Boy, it feels like UCF hasn't scored a point since the first half. It does, and this is the, the same flow that Cincinnati ran into. They had nothing going. Now UCF in the same boat. And guys, that was basically a timeout for Michelle to put in her set play, and yet another turnover. Miller lays it in. 24 to 1 is the run for Cincinnati. Well, somebody ate some skyline and woke up around here. Must be Cincinnati. A 10 point lead now for the Bearcats. Base off, nothing but hustle, nothing but defense. Getting out the fast break, Antoinette Miller. He's been a hero today.
game in this tournament. In that seat, been dialed in. He's got the net hat on. Brought his final four pins. I mean, Husky fans are passionate people. So this is what you get. You get somebody that's dedicated, not just to the Huskies games, all of them. He's wearing a net on his head, a basketball net. That's a basketball net hat. What time it is. I need about two of those. One for each daughter. I'm not wearing it. Latest 10. Brooke Christie and Roy back here inside Mohegan Sun. Ooh, good slip from Kaba. Couldn't get a hold of it though. Sifa, another steal. Cincinnati was trailing by 15. About 14 minutes ago, the score now paints an awfully different picture. Yeah, exactly. UCF just stale on offense. Cincinnati's defense has come alive, and offensively, you feel how much more confident they are. Just took a little bit of movement, and then it broke open for the Bearcats. Well, Michelle Clark heard said today, our mojo is defense, and we're seeing the offense open up because of the energy from the off from the defense for for Cincinnati. Bucket by KK. And that'll stop all the bleeding we've seen here in the last 10 or so minutes of this game. Just the second made field goal for UCF in our second half. Yeah, if you're the Knights, you still have plenty of time to work with here. Plenty. It's not over yet. And that is going to be the young lady to do it. KK Wright is not trying to go out in the semifinals of this tournament. Look out. Would have been a big shot, a big momentum shot for the Knights. Michelle Clark Heard told us yesterday, you know what, guys? I'm a dreamer, and I've got dreams of taking this team to the Final Four, cutting down the nets. Teams playing inspired basketball in our second half. Roy, to that point, I asked Michelle today, are you where you thought you would be here in year two? And she said, absolutely. They bought in. Our defense is so much better. The culture's where I want it to be. But she says, make no pun about it. I want to win. But she's realistic, knowing that they have to win this tournament to advance to the NCAA tournament. She's happy with the NWIT. She wants postseason. But she says, next year, we want to be in the NCAA tournament. Well, that would certainly be a nice building block. 24 wins a year ago. Most wins by first-year head coach in school history. And already over 20 <laughs> victories this season. <laughs> yes, I would like the timeout. I would like a 20. We'll be back, though. Eight-point lead for Cincinnati. Forty-nine to forty-one, our score. Three minutes into the fourth quarter, Brooke Christie and Roy back inside Mohegan Sun Arena. Michelle Clark heard, get the job done in year number two. Her Bearcats trailed by fifteen, now lead it by eight. That would tie the second largest comeback in AAC tournament history. Well, remember too, Cincinnati lost to UCF in the semifinals of this tournament last year. Automatically going to be a little salty. And remember that moment. For Tasia Sanders. Right to Kaba. And an offensive foul on Messini Kaba. I mean, Sam's going to get you anything you need, including a charge. Watch her give her body up here. You know, a bit of an elbow from Kaba, just enough to push her down. Sell the call. I mean, that was, that was a good sell to get the charge call. I wouldn't normally say, yeah, that's a, a, a great charge, but hey, it, it got the whistle blown. No comments on controversial calls from yours truly. <laughs> okay, because you know what time it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> it's getting late. Rogers in and out. And the offensive rebound, Adea Moore, she was fouled. How did that three-pointer not go down? I don't know. I mean, it was like, da, 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 out. Like halfway down the rim. Foul went against Walker. And Janelle Walker picks up her first for UCF. If 
about the only thing that's gone wrong for the Bearcats in the second half. One of the cheerleaders sprained his ankle during that last timeout. Yeah, not good. He's on the baseline, gonna hop his way off the floor. Poor guy. Hope you're feeling better later. Hey. Get him some ice, pack, ice packs, some Advil. My man's gotta be out here for tomorrow if Cincinnati makes it to the final. I mean, he walked off on his own power, too. That's exactly how he got off the floor. That's, that's tough, you know. Didn't anybody help him off? Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, all right, man. Good, good, good. We, we got you there, big dog. We got you. Big cat, man. Very yeah, cat. big cat. Yeah, let's go. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Lead is eight, approaching the halfway point of our fourth quarter. Big possession for their Knights and their NCAA tournament hopes. Diamond Battles probing, rejected. Thomas swatted that one away. At the very last minute, Thomas found Battles and found a clean look at the ball. Diamond Battles is so good at getting underneath the defense, just probing, poking, being annoying. If you're on defense, you always got to keep your eyes on number three. Sounds like our broadcast today. <laughs> Well, Brooke, the other thing that Cincinnati's doing so well is they're getting off their player on weak side, which has allowed them to rotate so much more effectively here in the second half. Yep. Well, guys, think about it. If UCF ends up losing this game, this would be the contest that likely cost the Knights a chance to punch their ticket to the tournament as wow. an at-large team. So you got five minutes to work with here and a lot on the line. Thomas on the offensive rebound. These are the energy killers if you're UCF. Thomas again, her seventh board. And KK Wright strips it away. Yeah, just when you think Cincinnati's gonna put a, or a nail in this coffin, KK Wright still keeping it alive. She's gonna have to do a lot. Oh, get caught for the travel there, yeah. yeah. Resume for the Knights. Over 20 victories, but you're looking for those impressive wins among the top 25. And right now, Coach Abe's club at 0-3, Charlie Cream as UCF as the last team in. So here's what you need to understand. For teams on the bubble, it's not only about what you do, it's what all the other teams on said bubble also do or don't do down the stretch. So for the Knights with a win or a loss, you still really don't control your own destiny because you're comparing resumes with five, six, maybe seven or eight other different programs at the, this late hour. And you need the, the teams with the one-bid conferences to have those top teams come through. Please. Yeah, Brooke, and specifically, you're looking at the Ivy. If you're a UCF fan, you want Princeton to win the Ivy. You want South Dakota State to win. You want Missouri State to get the W in the Missouri Valley Conference. Drake, right now the Conference USA is a league to watch as well because depending on what part of the week you're looking at, three teams potentially from Conference USA are also wow. in, in the field right now. Janae Walker just found out. Check that Brittany Smith. Be so crazy to think about one team from the AAC in and three teams from Conference USA in. I have another question. Do you think that there's enough ice in the building for Sam Rogers and the cheerleader? She is going to need some serious Advil and ice tonight. This young lady has put her body on the floor. My man, you got to give up that ice pack after the game. Sorry. Rogers was tripped as Smith fouled out there. This one hurts. Yeah, off the screen. I'm sorry, the ball fake. Yeah, just loses her balance and lands right on the hip. So gets the shot in the leg from Smith and the knee. So UCF's comeback attempt, no easier with Brittany Smith out of the lineup. And her team high 12 points. And after a couple of free throws missed by Rogers inside, Siani Martin, no. <laughs> I love how you got both teams pointing in their direction. Looking right at the official. You saw that, right? It's our ball. KK, right? Trying to force something to happen, right? You kind of feel that. Cincinnati's still in control defensively. Actually, Cincinnati's been on point, guys. However, they are 0 for 5 in the last five possessions. Turnover, missed free throws, a chance to put UCF away, and they haven't been able to close it out yet. Right, missed two layups. They were both contested. She fell down, no whistle, Cincinnati basketball. KK Wright, the senior, committed to the previous coaching staff. There was a coaching change. She met with the AD to ask her about the vision, where UCF was going as a basketball program before she decided to honor that commitment. 
And she has been sensational in her four year career in Orlando. And Roy, not just committed to UCF, she turned down four other power fives in the recruiting process because it was so important for her to stay home and establish this UCF program and make it into a national brand. I feel like, check that box, because KK Wright has done just that in her four years. Kaba just picked up her fourth. Brittany Smith has already fouled out for the Knights. Thomas back to the line. Four and five there tonight. And a solid 80% this season. Now the first time in five and a half minutes, Cincinnati has cracked the scoring column. Some missed free throws earlier from Sam Rogers. A couple of threes that went in and out. I mean, the UCF hasn't punished Cincinnati with those misses, right? They haven't come down and converted offensively. Nice, see Sipa, some more defensive pressure, just trying to slow down the UCF offense. Punish, that's a strong word, but I'm with you. <laughs> well played. March punishment, never kind. Oh, so true. Boy, Thomas, how active has she been with her hands? Blocking shots, tapping away passes, you mm -hmm. saw it again right there. Look how far away from the basket she is. This is one of the things that makes her a first-team All-American Conference member is you know, being able to read what's going on away from the basketball, help out, you know, leave her person to be able to help out with the guards' defense. When you think about the AAC next year, Thomas may be the preseason player of the year in the conference, entering her senior campaign. Martin tried to chase it down. Tie ball, jump ball rather than the tie-up. Sifa and Siani Martin. It'll stay with the Knights. Shot clock at two. Resets to 20. Under three to play, the lead is eight. UCF, it's tournament hopes on the line. Knights need a dub. KK oh Wright slings it in. New life right away for the night. That's all it takes is a little KK. We said a little good is good, a lot is great. KK clapped her hands to her teammates and said, let's get up. Defense, more intense on this possession for the Knights. Sifa, baseline. And the rebound to Gale, but she's called for the foul. KK Wright going to do what she can to extend her career here at Mohegan Sun Arena. One more game. Looking to see if Masani Kaba was clear off the roll. She wasn't. Cincinnati committed to it, gave her some space. And she does what KK does, pull up and shoot. Bearcats in the bonus. Two shots coming for Amari Thomas, the junior from Oakland. Seven of eight at the line tonight. 19 points for the first team all-conference performer. Three ball would make it a one possession game. It's probably the most important possession for UCF. Arguably of the entire season. Absolutely. Kaba wants a spot right, finally does. Oh, ho, ho. the shot Kaba. almost in. And finally, the whistle and a foul against Cincinnati. Cincinnati, great defense until the shot goes up. Look at Kaba beating Thomas right to the opposite side. You've got two other Bearcats, basically three red jerseys on the weak side. Nobody goes and gets the shot. The rebound. Masani Kaba, the junior from Massachusetts, 61% at the line this season. Her first free throws of the night. No, five of seven now. Just looking at the wrong line of the box score. There's lots of them. It's easy to do. It happens. Six of eight. Just like that, the lead is four. I like, I like Diamond Battles back in the game. She's going to be so active here on defense. This is going to be important for the Bearcats. This possession might be the important, most important one of their season. 
since he's missed his last seven field goals. Trapping pressure. Oh, wow. There's a steal by Cabo. Knights need a bucket. There goes Martin inside off glass and a chance for three. Drama. Yeah, bench. Okay. Catch your breath. Look at KK. Look at KK leading the huddle right here. Off the turnover, terrific anticipation by Masani Kaba. The ball gets into KK. What a good decision by Siani Martin. Instead of going for the three, look at that. Just a little hezzy. Thomas late. Sam Rogers late. First free throws of the night for Martin, 76% on this season, and just like that, a one-point affair. Now the Bearcats have missed three critical free throws here in the last two minutes of the game. Sam Rogers and Amari Thomas. Full court pressure. Boy, Diamond battles. It's on Miller like a blanket. Thomas drop step and pivot. 54-51. No timeout for the Knights. Martin was bumped, no whistle. Charlie Cream has UCF as his last team in the field as it stands right now. Good pass. KK right for the tie. Miller the rebound. Under a minute to play. Dangerous toss, Sifa saves it. How in the world did she save that? And why in the world do you make that pass? You try to settle down Cincinnati, keep, keep it clear. Oh, almost. My goodness. KK right. Oh, can't man. believe it. Coach Abe in disbelief. Well, it looks from here anyways, like that was completely clean. Coach Abe certainly feeling the same way. We will see, these are critical right now for Antoinette Miller. Battles out, Gale back in. Offense for defense. Big free throws for Miller, who's three for six. Bang, bang, play near half court. All right, we could be looking at a one-point game here. Here's KK. Oh, man, that's so frustrating because the official on the opposite side makes that call. Roy, I made that play a million times in college. I would get so mad when I get called for the foul because that looked squeaky clean. Christy, that was tough. I mean, I always was told by the officials they're going to make that call, but that was clean, straight on. I did it as a player, and that was a game changer because that was going to be a layup on the other end, yeah. and then we have a one possession game. So one of two at the line makes it a two possession contest. KK Wright, super crafty. Uh, that's, that's hard. I mean, there's no official behind, right? And it's not like you see Miller's hand get pushed out of the way. You see the ball go forward. Sorry, that's not a foul. It's just not. Yeah. I feel you, Coach Abe. But either way, that play is done. So now you really have to concentrate on what is going to maximize your ability to get back in this game. You have to get a turnover. Yes, you could begin to foul, and now with five fouls, it'll put Cincinnati on the line, but for two shots, it's really going to be critical of who you're going to foul. I think your defense is good enough to get a steal. I think you can try and trust that. There's still a little bit of time before you have to be desperation mode and foul. Well, Brooke, from an offensive perspective now for UCF, I would love for them just to go get a quick two. You don't need to settle for a three. Yes, it's a two possession game, but I believe teams waste too much time trying to get the three, quick two, then rely on your defense. Go yep. for that quick steal. Now, yep. most likely Cincinnati's gonna advance the ball, but go for steal before you look to foul. UCF's largest lead was actually at 15 points. Cincinnati's come all the way back. Knights trying to return the favor. Their NCAA hopes on the line. Got to hurry here with a sense of urgency. KK right. The step back triple. And Miller tapped it less. It was close. I mean, that's the shot you want by the person you want taking the shot. 
I like what Christy had to say. You don't have to force that. You can get a quick two. I mean, who knows? You try to drive at the basket, you might get an and one right now. That's the temperature of this game. Knights need a bucket. Mari Thomas starting KK. Taking a lot of time here. Martin's shot was rejected by Reiser. The most improved player in the American comes up clutch. Sifa was fouled. What a play by Angel Riser. Good defense, sticking with it. Wow, good anticipation. And Martin frustrated after that one. Now think about what Michelle Clark heard told us yesterday. Hey, did you see the news? Yeah, Angel Riser was recognized today. <laughs> Third team all-conference performer, most improved player in the league. And it's for plays like that for yep. number four in red. Yep. I mean, Christy, you were talking with Coach earlier today, and she got a little emotional talking about Angel. Yeah, it was really touching because I asked her point blank. I said, Michelle, the growth of your team's remarkable. Is that, can that be attributed to one particular player? And she got emotional because she said, Angel Riser. She said she always worked hard, but you're starting to see the confidence grow. You're seeing the fruits of all her labor, and that was a proud coach in that moment. Senior from Zebulon, North Carolina. Started every game this season, 13 points, nine rebounds tonight. A difference maker as Cincy leads it by six. And I believe she just looked at her team and said, we need one stop, one rebound. That's it. Can you go get that for me? And they all looked at her and said, absolutely, yes, coach, we can do it. This is for a chance to play against UConn for the title to get to the NCAA tournament. I believe also that Michelle Clark heard said, try to get the ball in the hands of Antoinette Miller, the best free throw shooter on the team. What a career for KK Wright on the crossover. Tried to call the timeout, the jump ball back to the Bearcats. And that may just about do it. Well, there's the stop that you needed if you're Cincinnati. You're the benefit of a turnover and a hustle in possession. If you're Coach Abe, this one stings pretty darn bad because you knew coming into this game, it was a must win. You didn't feel comfortable if you only got to the semifinals of the AAC. But for UCF, the 2C, they've done, had a terrific year. Minus this right here. This is what's going to hurt him getting in as an at-large. Knights once led in this game by 15 points. Second half, Cincinnati's outscored UCF 32 to 15. This would actually tie for the second best comeback in tournament history. If this score holds, and it will. The Bearcats do it. Cincinnati to the championship game of the American. Now, congratulations to the Bearcats. What a hard fought game to come back from. It's <laughs> it's time to get hyped, Coach. That's right. Bearcats, you are playing for a title tomorrow. Bring your skyline chili. Roy wants to have some pregame. 57 to 51, the final score. And the Queen City's going to be rocking tonight after this win.